Good afternoon. Uh, just a few seconds to start because attendees are arriving now. Yeah, I don't expect many from the United States here because it's a, it's a holiday week. So uh, Thanksgiving, right? Uh, yeah, it starts today. Well, today is the last day of work, but nobody comes to work. So, mm. or nobody works actually because coming to work <laughs> is a different <laughs> expression now. Then let's just start. I think that the number now is stopped a little bit, but I'm sure that the people will, will arrive. Um, then good afternoon to everyone. My name is Sara Bazar. I'm part of the staff of the Barcelona Das Regional Center, the SDAS was Regional Center for Northern Africa, Middle East, and Europe. And I'm glad to welcome you today to this new webinar. Uh, just a reminder about the platform for the webinar. We are using this Zoom platform that is basically like a Zoom meeting but you don't have direct access with the speakers today. Then for accessing us, you have two channels, the Q&I box and the chat. Then also you can raise your hand if you want to launch a question uh, to the speakers after the talk. And today with me sharing this nice uh, day, it is Slodovan Nitschkovic that is part of the, of this SDS was regional node. Also, it is Santiago Gasso that is uh, is uh, from Americas. is 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 an expert in satellite data and passionate for high latitude dust. Then welcome Santiago to chair this session today. And also we have a new chair member in the panel list. Is Mark Parrington. He's an expert in fires and is working in the ECMWMF. And also is the person that all of you probably will follow it through Twitter because it's posting all the updates and news related with atmospheric composition, air quality, and all the products that you can uh, gather from around the world related with air quality. And um, this is my part of the introduction. Then I will pass the floor to Slodovar Nitschkovic that uh, will introduce our speakers of today. Okay. Hello to everybody. Uh, today we are focused on uh, presentations related to overview of the aerosol products produced by UMETSAT and the associated capacity building activities. Uh, and the webinar is, as you already heard, uh, organized by WMO Barcelona Dust Regional Center. Uh, one of the number of webinars uh, is now already tradi tradition, I would say. We started with the Indust uh, project. Uh, uh, but now everything is under WMO SDS was. So today we, uh, I'm glad to, to introduce uh, our two presenters. This uh, Federico Tiagli uh, from UMETSAT. Uh, uh, he's there from 9, 2019, expert in atmospheric dynamics and chemistry. And he communicates and teach on many aspects of satellite data. And uh, I would like also to mention that uh, since 2002, he's a senior scientist at uh, NRC, Italy, and uh, associate professor of climate physics at the uh, University of Rome. Uh, 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 so he will cover definitely uh, uh, knowledge and, and uh, stuff from his expertise. And the second presenter today, we have two uh, colleagues. Uh, uh, this is uh, Sabrina Zetto. If I'm wrong, uh, just correct me, Sabrina, in, in uh, uh, reading your surname. And independent uh, geospatial consultant, uh, uh, empowering organizations to use geospatial data and technology. So uh, Sabrina is uh, uh, has eight years of uh, coding experience and holds a master uh, degree in forestry from Yale University. Sabrina has developed uh, Jupyter Notebooks and conducted user training 
on atmospheric composition data set for UMED search since 2021. She's also recognized as a Google development uh, expert for uh, Earth Engine. Uh, definitely, uh, today's subject is of great importance for SDS was. Uh, many of us, in different ways, we are using the satellite pro products for validation of the models, for example, but also to better understand the process. So I give the floor, I guess, to Federico as the first presenter, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Zolobanan, and uh, thanks, uh, Sara and all the chair. It's, uh, it is a pleasure to be here. I hope that you hear me properly and uh, you, can, uh, you can see my presentation. Uh, so today uh, we discuss about uh, which aerosol product that uh, are, uh, can be used for dust monitoring uh, are present in the UMITSAT catalog and which data set will be present in the next years. Uh, I hope it is... Uh, Okay, uh, what is UMEDSAT? Uh, UMEDSAT, uh, in uh, in a nutshell, in a few words, is an international organization, a European European based. We have uh, thirty five uh, contributing countries, and our job is to uh, set up, implement, manage, and uh, uh, distribute satellite uh, satellite uh, observations for uh, for the Earth. Uh, we work on uh, several on several aspects on several thematics, uh, but uh, I mean uh, to be short, what is important to, to keep it here? This is the series of satellites we work with and we manage. You see Metosat that I mean probably most of you uh, know, and uh, uh, and that is a uh, uh, this generation that is uh, of satellites the Metosat that is goes together with the, with the Euro European Polar System, the so-called METOP or EPS that are uh, that are polar uh, polar observations, and also goes with uh, with a big bunch of uh, uh, of Copernicus missions. Uh, we will mention today Sentinel three, but also Sentinel four and five that will come in the next couple of years. So the main message is that. Uh, we uh, we provide observation since the early year 2000, and we have uh, a multi-decadal program that is now consolidated until 2000, uh, 2042. Uh, we work in strong partnership uh, supported by the Commission uh, within the Sentinel program, but we also training with the European Space Agency for uh, the setup, the build-up, and the launch of the satellites. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is just to go on the uh, on the um, on the on the real part uh, the type of uh, of data sets that we have for the moment for aerosol. This is the so-called product map. And uh, we see that uh, uh, we have the product from Severi, from Metosat second generation, that is an aerosol optical depth. We have a products uh, coming from uh, Sentinel-3, uh, from two instruments. So the uh, the Severi started in 2002. Uh, Sentinel-3 was launched, the first was launched in 2016, and now we have two, uh, we have two different uh, uh, two different Sentinel-3A uh, Sentinel and B flying, and with both instruments, uh, we measure aerosol. Then we have, uh, uh, we have data sets that are coming from METOP that are the polar satellites. There are three instruments that are providing information on aerosol. The first one is GOM2. Uh, that is uh, dating back from 2007. The second one is YASI, uh, and the YASI, in addition to the into the to the optical depth, has also the capability uh, to uh, to have an information on aerosol height. And uh, the third product is a so-called so combined product is PMAP that puts together different uh, information from different sensors and that has also the feature to have an index of the aerosol type. Uh, Products coming from UMETSAT, they're also distributed by the so-called satellite application facility. Uh, I will mention two of them. So the, uh, the climate monitoring SAF and the CMSAF, uh, how, we, how we call it, for instance, they, uh, they provide the climate data record and there is one climate data record on aerosol optical depth from Sevilla. And the second one is the atmospheric composition SAF and they have a series of uh, uh, supporting and geophysical uh, aerosol product. I mean, among them, for instance, uh, a dust operational product that comes from YASI and is a planned uh, from 2023. 
just to conclude my introduction, we uh, we also work uh, in uh, in what we call uh, a data chain, a complex data chain, and in fact a lot of uh, a lot of our data sets, including uh, the one on aerosol, are uh, ingested or come part of of services and come part of uh, assimilation systems. And uh, for what concern aerosol, the let's say the key user or the key uh, the key ending point uh, is uh, is the implementation that is done in the camps uh, in the camps service uh, and uh, this is uh, this is really part of uh, let's say of a long story no we start from the definition of the instruments and then we arrive to the camps product that you probably know uh, so we need to we need just to make a very very short introduction on what is remote sensing uh, I assume that most of you are, uh, I mean, if not experts, uh, uh, at least uh, used to uh, to satellite data. But I mean, basically, the concept is we use an artificial device, not our eyes, to observe and measure things from a distance. And the point is that there is uh, there is no disturbance of the medium that we are sounding. So basically, is. Uh, uh, is a measurement that it is uh, is not able to to measure uh, the fine fraction, the composition, uh, the type of uh, the type of uh, aerosol of particles that, for instance, are composing a layer of dust. This is done uh, with the two techniques. Uh, basically, uh, all of them they work on the uh, on the measurement of the electromagnetic spectrum on electromagnetic energy, and we have passive sensors that measure uh, in general the, the light that is reflected by by the sun, and active sensors that measure the reflection of, uh, of of a source of light that is on board a satellite, like for instance Calliope, the lidar. Uh, we have two types of orbits. Uh, it is important to mention this because it is as uh, implication in terms of repetition time and usability. Uh, the first one, as you see here, is uh, what we call the sun synchronous. So this is the generation of the polar satellite, the Sentinel-3, Sentinel-5 and the METOP. So this is a satellite that has a repetition time uh, and always observe the, the Earth at the same local time. Huh? Uh, so we, you can have constellation and ensemble of satellites that can, can provide richer coverage and coverage at the different times. But basically the concept is that you don't have a, a, high, a high time resolution coverage. But you have the advantage to be closer to the surface, so you have a higher signal to noise ratio and also to have the possibility to observe globally. Uh, second geometry, geostationary, like Meteosat, uh, big advantage to observe always the same, uh, the same face of the Earth, then you can see the evolution of phenomenon. Disadvantage is to observe the same face of the Earth. So the fact that you don't, uh, you don't see on the other side, and also the instrument, uh, the, the satellite is farther away, and then the signal to noise ratio is, uh, is lower. Uh, the principle of a satellite measurement is basically we receive, uh, uh, we measure, uh, we measure a spectrum or we measure uh, radiation at a different wavelengths, and then uh, using a series of retrieval algorithm, we go uh, for the uh, for the estimate uh, basically of the effect of a composant or of the aerosol or of an absorber on the radiation on the radiation that is observed. So basically, it's not uh, a direct measurement. Uh, in the case of the aerosol, the, the signal from the aerosol comes, uh, this is a case of, of a passive satellite. I mean, most uh, all the satellite, all the instruments that we'll mention now, they, they work in this configuration. So basically, uh, they, they measure the, 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 the reflection and the, and the emission, the reflection of the solar radiation and the emission of the Earth itself. And basically, if you wanted to extract an information on the aerosol, uh, this has to be, uh, this has to be uh, separated and has to be identified from uh, signal that comes from the uh, from the scattering of the air that is uh, tabulated is known, but also the signal that comes from the surface and the signal that comes from the clouds. And both the surface and the cloud, as we know, are high variable and they have uh, uh, a very strong intensity that can also cover completely the signal that comes from the satellite. Uh, basically, to to be to be very uh, in a nutshell, uh, this is uh, this is what happens in terms of uh, I mean in terms of analytics with I mean a simple equation. Basically, the objective is uh, to observe the role of the aerosol here uh, in that case as, as a reflector or as a filter, and is characterized 
by the optical depth. So basically the objective is to identify the, uh, the perturbation that an aerosol layer has uh, in terms of interaction with, uh, with the radiation. But as we will see, uh, one of the big point is the fact that uh, we have also the surface reflectance and based on the intensity of the surface reflectance, uh, the, the capability and the signal to noise ratio of the retrieval, we call retrieval basically the process to estimate the role of the aerosol uh, of the aerosol in terms of extinction and reflection on the radiation uh, can change can change much. Uh, I will show it here. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, this are observation in the visible range, and uh, and basically, sorry, here the, 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 it's it's written in the in the wrong way. These are Canary Islands, uh, and that is uh, West uh, uh, Western Africa. Uh, so what we what we see basically is that. For the effect of, of reflectance of the surface, here, for instance, the effect of the, the presence of, of, of a dust of a dust tongue of a dust of a dust area is much well visible above uh, above the sea rather than above uh, above the ground. It is basically because, uh, from uh, let's say electromagnetic point of view, they have a similar color, and in some way the intensity of reflection from the surface is very uh, is very uh, is very intense. Uh, also, another point uh, uh, that we have to take into consideration when we talk about optical depth is the is the wavelength uh, is the wavelength dependence. Uh, we can uh, we can obtain measurements, and this is, for instance, an example of what uh, of what we can obtain from the iron that is ground based. But the point is that we can we can make measurements at different wavelengths to try to obtain information on the uh, rough size or on the equivalent radius of the of the particles, because we know that the effect of the scattering from the aerosol is wavelength dependent, and then having information at different wavelength can, for instance, provide the possibility to estimate an angstrom coefficient or uh, let's say a rough uh, distinction between uh, uh, large and uh, smaller uh, scatters. And this is basically the principle of identification uh, that is used uh, in, the, in the algorithm that I will present now. Uh, another important point is that, uh, uh, just to keep in mind, is that when we measure from the top, uh, we can observe an aerosol optical depth, but the aerosol optical depth can be due to different factors. So, so for instance, here is an aerosol optical depth of 0, 0,3 that is due to aerosol particles close to the ground, and this one, for instance, is uh, the superposition of two layers, dust and the sea salt. So basically, it's, uh, it is extremely important to mention the fact that satellite observation uh, cannot directly or may have uh, difficulties in identifying which type of, uh, which type of measurement which type of aerosol we are observing i start from geostationary now it's a, it's a sort of uh, <clears throat> of review of the different products uh, this is Severi, is uh, probably, I mean, well known. Uh, so Severi works uh, with, uh, with visible channels uh, and also has uh, uh, an aerosol optical depth product that, uh, that is uh, derived, uh, that is uh, derived also in the, in the visible. So basically with uh, these products, uh, we can, uh, we can in fact characterize the presence of dust and is, uh, is a gestationary observation. So the, um, uh, the, 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 the tracking is, uh, is, uh, has, has a good, uh, good time resolution. This, for instance, is an example of the aerosol optical depth that is provided by the CMSAF, so this is properly a climate data record. Then, I'm sorry, you are probably aware of the possibility to combine different channels. Uh, and for instance, combining different channels in the infrared, we can give balance to different effects. So uh, Meteosat uh, comes, uh, Severi comes with the so-called dust RGB product. And the dust RGB uh, is based on the combination of uh, red, green, uh, blue channels that we see here. These are the wavelengths. And in fact, we see that the red and partly the green, but mostly red, is sensitive to dust. While, for instance, the, uh, the 10.8 channel is, uh, is more, uh, is more uh, uh, sensitive to the temperature, cold clouds, and warm surface. Uh, so basically, this is again an image. This is the central Mediterranean. And we see that, for instance, dust with this type of combination, dust is visible as a purple, very reddish channel. That is, it means is the is the is the dominance of the difference between uh, the twelve and the 10.8 channels. Uh, while, for instance, here into the dark red are uh, are 
weaker cloud. So we see also, for instance, going uh, to the blue uh, in the area that is marked by six, uh, uh, sandy deserts and drier mass. So absence of dust and absence of clouds. And that is, is again a dominant, the so-called blue signal. Uh, I move now to uh, polar satellites. So this is uh, uh, the aerosol index, uh, and this uh, historically is the first uh, uh, is the first product that we started we started to provide. This comes from the GOM2. So the first observation are from 2007, among the observation that we provide, and the aerosol index uh, is uh, uh, is based on the UV. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, uh, an historical thing because uh, the the GOM satellite is. Is, uh, was uh, conceived for measuring ozone, so it has to work in the ultraviolet because the ozone is more uh, is more sensitive. We are more sensitive to ozone in these uh, in these wavelengths. But the, the advantage uh, is uh, to measure at a different polarization, so identify the effect of aerosol in different polarization uh, using the contrast between uh, between the two wavelengths, and then is uh, also less sensitive to the clouds with respect to the visual uh, to the to the to the visual wavelengths and the infrared wavelengths. Then we have the possibility, and that is, is again an aggregation, uh, to identify the presence of uh, uh, a strong aerosol burden, but without having the possibility to distinguish or to disentangle which type of uh, aerosol we are uh, we are measuring but however uh, it is also useful for instance to uh, to see the evolution of large uh, dust plumes and also to uh, to have an information uh, below uh, below the clouds this is for instance the same image here that uh, uh, we have uh, we have shown here so this is the same dust plume this is observed and divisible by uh, by by metasat and this is what is what is observed as uh, by the aerosol index uh, there are some uh, i mean some hints on uh, Basically, the aerosol index we we said it's uh, it's uh, it's a sensitive to different type of aerosol, uh, and basically this is a map. This is a map that comes from uh, from ACSAF, from the atmospheric composition SAF. It is distributed also by KNMI, and uh, we see that in close to the desert, so the, to the desert sources, the aerosol index is very likely composed by by dust. Why, for instance, you can also have enhancement that are due in that case from smoke. Bloom. Uh, should also take into account the fact that uh, there are instrumental uh, instrumental effects like the sun glint that happens uh, on the on the sea. Uh, I go now to Yasi. Is uh, the second instrument uh, still on board Metop? Uh, so Yasi is a Michelson interferometer and has uh, a large number of uh, of uh, of channels uh, uh, spectral channels in the in the thermal and the infrared region and uh, has uh, also a, an aerosol optical depth estimate uh, and this is uh, for instance uh, a map the last map available it is distributed by uh, by iris uh, and by uh, by the french uh, the french uh, the french cnrs uh, and this is the last map uh, for uh, for a couple of days ago and again here is uh, uh, as we see it is uh, it is uh, it is uh, quite easy to see the the last uh, the last dust transport event at the end uh, at the end of september uh, this year uh, uh, IASI, thanks to the to the fact that it has um, has many channels in the infrared, uh, has channels that are sensitive to different heights. Then uh, there are products, uh, and this is an example of a product that comes from uh, the BIRA, the Belgian Institute for uh, Aeronomy, uh, and is a paper from Sophie van den Bush. Uh, as also an indication of the uh, of the dust height, and this is that this comes from a, a paper from 2018, and is the comparison of uh, of the retrieval that is made in Brussels with respect to other retrievals of the Yazi instruments concerning the estimate of the height of the dust. And also there is a work in terms of uh, of regular validation. This is, for instance, a comparison with a Calliope uh, transect. And I mean, we see that the height estimate has, has often a good, uh, good, um, good agreement with the LIDAR. Third instrument uh, in, uh, in Polar, third instrument overall is uh, Sentinel three. Sentinel three is a satellite, and there, there are two instruments that are uh, that are uh, now providing uh, uh, information on the aerosol. Uh, these are the S SLSTR and the Olchi. Uh, 
Uh, it's a satellite that is uh, dedicated to ocean measurements, but uh, I mean, uh, since these instruments, uh, they work in uh, uh, in various spectral bands, as you see here, uh, thermal infrared and also indivisible, uh, there is a the possibility, uh, for instance, with the SLSTR, to derive uh, an uh, aerosol optical depth uh, in the thermal infrared. This is an example of, of this product. And this product is also, uh, is also available. Uh, one of the nice advantage is the fact that with OLCI, for instance, you have also uh, visible channels. Uh, and then uh, you can have both uh, information on the visible here. Uh, these are the fires in Australia. Is I mean, is an image just to show this. And also, this is combined on the same platform with uh, with the collocated instruments that measure aerosol optical depth. Just to add on the pack, uh, we also have a product on the on the fire radiative power, uh, and this is an example of uh, <clears throat> of observation still from SLSTR in the thermal infrared uh, with the fire uh, and is a product of fire pixel. Uh, again, this is a polar satellite, so as a as a repetition, as a repetition rate, and you can see it, for instance, here with the, with the these uh, with the these bands. You no, know? each each of these correspond to a different time and to different satellite as well. But also these products, they uh, basically they date back from February two thousand sixteen. Uh, synergy synergistic products. Uh, Putting together instruments, so for instance, in that case, AVHRR on uh, YASI and GOM2 on, uh, on METOP. So taking three instruments, so a radiometer, uh, GOM2 uh, with the aerosol index and YASI with the thermal infrared, uh, there is the possibility to obtain, uh, to obtain a combined aerosol optical depth. So making use of it different satellite uh, SWOT and different satellite sensitivities in order to have uh, a, more, uh, a more complete coverage. Uh, so the product is uh, called PMAP. So PMAP dates back uh, uh, from 2007. So the first uh, data that we have from GOM2 and the ASI. And uh, there are several versions. This is uh, the, uh, the PMAP 2.2.4, 2, 2, uh, that is the operational product. It's, an, it's a product that is uh, provided in, uh, in, uh, in near real time. And as you see, also, thanks to the measurement at the different wavelengths, there is also an index for the discrimination of different types of aerosol. So uh, as you see here, uh, we have different, uh, different classes. So basically, the product comes with different classes. And th there is one class for desert dust, class for volcanic ash, uh, class for, for biomass, and class for, uh, for ash uh, continental clouds. So what we see here, for instance, again, is the, is the presence of dust uh, above, uh, above the uh, Atlantic Ocean that are associated with this intense dust event. Uh, PMAP also uh, has been reprocessed in order to create uh, what we call a climate data record. Uh, so a longer term data series that are homogenized because uh, when we work in near real time, one of the problem is that the algorithm change, but data sets are not reprocessed back. And then we observe here uh, the last release that was uh, was provided to the climate to the C3S, the climate change service, and we we see that uh, in fact is uh, is extremely uh, potentially useful for a long term monitoring and long term analysis of the uh, of the of the presence of dust. And that is just I mean to show you the for instance the consistency in terms of daily mean aerosol optical depth uh, through time. So with the the composition of uh, of, uh, of a time series that spans from mid-2007 uh, to 2020-2021. This is the existing. I would like to, to keep the last uh, three, four minutes to show you what is the future, close future. Uh, so I start with the metosector generation. Uh, we have two, sat two type of satellites. One is the imager. Uh, so has the flexible combined imager, so is the is the son, powered son of Severi. Uh, and also there is a the sounding mission with, uh, with uh, IRS, with an infrared sensor, but also with the Sentinel-4. Uh, the launch of the first one is a planned uh, now, uh, in terms of the timing. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, in less than one month, and that is the last uh, photo of the satellite. Uh, 
basically, higher resolution, higher, uh, higher uh, uh, time repetition, up to three minutes, and also the possibility to have complementarity with the other geo, uh, with other uh, geostationary and low uh, lower orbit uh, instruments. But I mean, basically, there will be continuity with uh, uh, with Severi. Uh, there will be a new generation also in polar orbit. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, EPS, what we call EPS-SG, second generation, METOP. And here there will be a MET image, so again, a visible infrared image, Sentinel-5, that is, uh, let's say, the go-ahead, uh, the continuity of uh, Sentinel-5P, uh, and the 3MI, that is, uh, is an instrument that is really dedicated to the, to the aerosol. And the 3MI is, uh, in fact, the polarimeter, uh, has the two uh, field of view optics and the two different detectors, uh, basically works in uh, on 12 bands uh, at a different wavelengths and has a the i mean a the feature like uh, like was polder is, is a sort of continuation of polder uh, to measure uh, to measure at a different uh, at the different polarization angles and then uh, have the possibility to characterize clouds and also aerosol uh, I will mention also CO2M, uh, that is uh, a satellite that is due in 2026 to monitor uh, to monitor carbon uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, I mean, not uh, directly applicable to dust, but I mean, is uh, is uh, is for completeness. And in fact, what is uh, uh, what is uh, what is interesting is that uh, if we go back to the products and we add here what we will have in the future there will be a substantial evolution. Uh, so with the, the, the METOP, the, 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 next, uh, the next polar generation satellite, we will have, uh, we will have uh, three new instruments. And with the 3MI, we will have uh, not only the aerosol optical depth, but also the capability uh, with the polarimeter and the, and the measurement of different wavelengths uh, to characterize uh, the, uh, the fine mode fraction, to estimate the single scattering albedo, to estimate the refractive index, uh, and also to measure the aerosol height. This goes together on the same platform with Sentinel-5 that uh, has aerosol optical depth and aerosol absorbing index. And they will compose also with the passing instrument of the Up. So a, a new product that is using, composing different sensors. Then on the geostationary platform, we have FCI that we have just mentioned, but there will be also Sentinel-4 uh, that, uh, that is again uh, an ultraviolet. Uh, in the works in the ultraviolet range. And the Sentinel-4 will have, uh, again, uh, measurements of the aerosol uh, absorbing index, but also estimates of the optical depth and the potentially product on the aerosol height. Uh, so I will, uh, I mean, I will close with a, with a statement, no? saying, okay, of course, there is, no, uh, there is no perfect instrument, as we see, Uh, I mean, every type of sensor, every type of satellite measure uh, measure dust and measure aerosol in different with different methods, measure different aspects of the aerosol, and measure uh, on different platform. Uh, so basically, again, is the is the is the information uh, is the story. Story of the of the Indian of the Indian uh, scientists of the Indian uh, wise men that uh, when they are blindfolded they they touch an elephant and everyone see a different aspect and everyone has a has a different idea of what uh, what it should be, but I mean again the the. The, the, the point is that bringing together this different information also from these different sensors, these different platforms, you have the possibility, for instance, of putting together all the uh, smaller experience to, to characterize at the best. Uh, Uh, at best the phenomenon. And I mean, basically, we know that in terms of needs, uh, we really go, uh, we really try to go as much as possible to have information on the, on the typology on the dynamics, on the evolution, on the height, uh, and uh, as much as possible also on the, uh, on, the, on the mass and the effect of the radiation. But I mean, basically with this set and this ensemble of measurements, we are going in this direction. Uh, we uh, now the question of the access of the data. Uh, so basically, umetsat.int access minus our minus data. So uh, in that uh, in that website, you in our website you find all the all the information. Uh, unfortunately, the data sets are accessible in different data sets are accessible in different access in different points. But I mean, basically, the central point is a EO port. 
portal where you can uh, uh, where you can create a, your user account and subscribe the services. Then all the products are present in the product navigator, so you can browse and discover the products. Uh, this will evolve into the Umetsa data store uh, that uh, will be uh, is already open and is evolving, so it's a new service in evolution, and that this will be the uh, the data store, so the access point for all the data sets for Umetsa. I mean, for instance, now uh, we already have the Severi data that are uh, available there in real time. <laughs> Then you have the UMET data center that is accessible with the EO portal to order the past data. And we have the UMET view that is a visualization platform. In addition to this, uh, I spend one word on the Wikio. Uh, Wikio.eu is, uh, is powered by Copernicus and is uh, one of the school DIAS. So is, is, a, is a data access point for Copernicus data sets. So here you will find for what concerns the satellites Sentinel-3 and Sentinel-5P for the moment, but it also contains CAMS, uh, contains uh, the CMEMS, uh, the Mercator Ocean products, uh, and also contain the C3S products. So these are accessible uh, on, the, on the different uh, houses uh, on the different uh, distributed data stores and uh, is uh, and also has a possibility for instance for basic cloud uh, computing and the possibilities to data analysis i conclude my presentation before leaving the space to sabrina uh, with an announcement so we have uh, also a program of training we have a program of data uptake and the thesis uh, uh, i mean we had a couple of uh, of training school together with uh, with sara with mark uh, with imet uh, with the actress program uh, and also with the support of copernicus and wmo uh, we had uh, two schools uh, uh, begin end 2021 early 2022 and now i'm happy to announce that there will be a new edition and next edition uh, next year early next year at the end of february so more information will come very very soon also to enroll and also to apply so i stop here and uh, yes thanks thank you very much for your attention any question is good and uh, i think i directly leave the floor to sabrina zeto okay thank you federico and thanks again, everyone, for joining us. So um, as Federico mentioned, we do have an uh, upcoming training, and we look forward to having a lot of you as well uh, take part in the future. So today, I would like to share with you about how to access um, three data sets that Federico actually mentioned in his presentation. And this is going to be done via a self-learning, uh, self-paced module, which we have developed, uh, which is located up here. And the website will be shared in, in the chat or the Q&A. And this is at dust.trainhub.umetset.int. And this is a website that you can access at any time for your own use. And it's a self-paced module which covers different types of data that you can um, use for monitoring aerosols and dust. So this covers a remote sensing satellite data that uh, Federico mentioned as well as ground-based in-situ data, as well as forecast models. So in terms of the satellite data that uh, I will be introducing to you today, um, this will be the MSG Severi RGB composites that Federico showed you, as well as the Metop ABC GOME2 um, absorbing aerosol index product, as well as the PMAP product, which uh, Federico also showed. So the great thing about this website is not only will you get to learn about the different data products, but you also get to um, execute some Jupyter notebooks that will help you to actually process that data. And I will show you what that looks like. So starting with the MSG Severi RGB composites, um, a little bit about this data set. The spatial resolution is at one kilometer at Nadir, and the revisit time is every 15 minutes. You can download this data via the UMETSAT data store by just clicking on this link. And take note that you need to register for an account on the UMETSAT EO portal before you can download this data. So on this page, it basically shows you what libraries are required to open and view the data set. We're using a variety of Python libraries such as Xarray, NumPy, Matplotlib, Cartopy, and SetPy as well as PI resample to resample the data. And we also have a series of helper functions that you can see um, 
that will be available for you to actually open this data more easily. So the MSG True Color Composite shows the natural color of um, the image, and you can see dust, as Federico showed earlier, in this kind of brown orange um, color. And you can also use the same workflow to create a dust RGB composite that will have the dust in the pink color. So here we're using SetPy to open this um, available readers to read in the, the data. And it basically reads in the data as a SetPy scene from a certain file name. You can take a look at what data sets are available within the scene. And then you can also load a single band to take a look at the data set. And this loads it as an X array data array. So I'm going to go pretty quickly here because we don't have much time, but I encourage you to take a look at this workflow on your own. Um, SatPy also has a wide variety of composites that you can use. So like I mentioned to you, uh, we will have a, both a natural color or a true color, as well as the dust RGB. So you can then select a composite name and load the scene with that composite name so that it will be um, showing the correct band combinations for that color, uh, for that RGB composite. So in this case here, we are showing an event where we have Saharan dust being transported over the Mediterranean, over into Europe. And this is also subsetted to show Southern Europe around the, the Mediterranean. So this is the natural color or true color composite. And if we change it around, instead of using natural color to showing the dust composite, we can then um, have this uh, visualized like this, where you have, again, the dark reds here uh, being the clouds and the dust in this magenta or pink color that is being transported over the Mediterranean. So if you compare this image here, focusing on the dust, the pink color, to the one up here where we see the dust in more of an orange or sandy color, um, color you can see this also matches on where the uh, pink uh, is showing on this dust RGB. So I encourage you to take a look at the MSG Severi RGB workflow over here. And in addition, we have now the GOME2 AI or Absorbing Aerosol Index product. And the spatial resolution is one degree by one degree. It uh, has a global coverage because this is a geostationary product and has daily and monthly aggregates for, for your use. So you are able to download this um, AAI GOME2 data, and it's a level three data product from Temis. And you are able to then click on that link here. They will take you to the page where you can select which data products you'd like to download and use. So again, we're using X-Array, Pandas, and Matplotlib, as well as Cartopy to display this data. And again, as for an event um, in 2021, in February. So this workflow guides you through opening a single file to see exactly, because it's a net CDF file, what the structure of the data is like, what are the coordinates, and what are the data variables inside. So here we have the absorbing aerosol index, which is exactly our product of interest. And we can um, take, take that um, out of the, and select this particular data variable by using the square brackets here, and then take a look further at the data array. So uh, you can open multiple files at the same time in the same folder using xarray open underscore MF dataset. And after you do this, we can also load the satellite uh, data from not just one, Metop satellite, but multiple. So here we have Metop B um, data. And then here we load the Metop C data. And then we can concatenate all three um, data sources using this particular function here called xarray.concat, which stands for concatenate. So we combine it all together. We assign the time coordinates. And then we are able to look at it in a single grid which is very useful for when we want to visualize this product. So after we combine all this information from the satellites from GOME2, the GOME2 instruments, we can then visualize um, this particular absorbing aerosol index, which is showing the same event 
where we have this dust transport from um, the Saharan region northwards into the Mediterranean and Southern Europe. Okay, and then we also have a bit of code here which lets you animate the product and you can then see how this works. So this is the final data set, which is the PMAP data set. And you can again access it using the UMANSAT data center. Um, you do need to have an account again before you can download it. We use very similar libraries to open the product. And as we're running out of time, I, I won't go through this in too much detail. Um, but we basically use the NetCDF4 Python library to open the data and take a look at the structure, uh, the 15 groups that are inside the data file. Um, we are most interested in the measurement data group and the geodata group, as well as the observation data um, subgroups, because we need to access these aerosol center latitude and longitudes, as well as the aerosol class and aerosol optical depths to get these data variables of our interest. So we basically load the data, take a look at it, and then we have a way to load multiple files together. And finally, we um, take a look at the compiled X-Array data array. We subset this data to the Mediterranean region using this uh, function here. And then finally, we can visualize this data, which also shows a transport of dust northwards across the Mediterranean. So on the Jupyter book, all of these are just uh, notebooks that you can view. If you want to actually execute this, you can click on the link here that says execute the notebook on the training platform, which will take you into a Jupyter lab. Uh, once again, you need to register for an account before you can do this. And the link is on the first page, but I can show you that the same notebook is then available in the Jupyter Lab platform. And you can simply uh, run the entire notebook by clicking on this uh, button here, or run them individually cell by cell by clicking on this button here. So to register for the account for this training platform, simply go back to the home page and click on this register link, which will take you to a website where you can click on sign up new account to create your account. So that's all for my demonstration here again. And again, I encourage you, if you're interested to learn more for our upcoming training school, here is the, the link. I will just paste it into the, I will share this with, with you all later on. And um, thank you again for your attention. Thanks a lot, Sabina, for the talk, and Federico. I think that you are now with the camera on, I hope. And I will pass the floor to Santiago and Mark for the questions and answers uh, part. Then I think that there are questions, right? I yeah, saw... no, I think, I think there are rather uh, the questions. There are basically two questions, and they are very pointed, asking for details on... on uh specifics on parameters and data availability so uh, do you want me to read them or uh, i i think i think federico can address them um yes i can i can i can do it i've seen them there yeah. is a, there is one question i mean there is one question on ai on aerosol absorbing index on the threshold mm -hmm. i think is there uh, the question was uh uh p p p p p p uh yeah for what is the threshold value of ai to consider it as dust i mean basically ai is a, is a binary value so it's it's positive it has to be defined as positive and uh, in general is above two to three uh this is the this is the range of values for which the the aerosol layer is sufficiently thick to be to be observed and uh, and as i said before the discrimination between dust and non dust is uh, it doesn't it doesn't give an indication if it is dust or not it gives, gives an indication if there is a, a sufficiently thick aerosol layer uh, whatever that is uh, below the clouds or uh, in cloud free condition but in order uh, in order to uh, to to identify the dust, uh, it's uh, 
I mean, is is more uh, uh, let's say qualitative, and uh, and uh, I mean, basically, is uh, it has to be related to the sources and also to to other supporting observations. Uh, there are also questions I have seen on the data access. I don't know, Santiago, if you wanted to, uh, I mean, if I address them in, uh, in a short. Yes, yes, yes. The, we, I mean, there were questions that they were addressed in the during the slides. Uh, yeah, I would yeah. just, mm. I would comment on top of what you said about the uh, aerosol index. It, it's uh, because I work a little bit on that too. Uh, the it, it, it really depends on the wavelengths you're using. So the threshold, uh, it could be, uh, it depends, uh, the aerosol index is a ratio of two radiances at two wavelengths in the UV. Uh, the, the wavelengths determine what threshold you're going to be using. So if you, for example, if you're using GOM or if you're using uh, uh, Sentinel 5P, uh, they use different ratios, different wavelengths. So the, the threshold should be different, but usually above one is a reasonable. Mm -hmm. Above two, you're certainly seeing something that is is there. Above one is probably is there. Below mm -hmm. one, don't trust it. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah, concerning the, I, yeah, concerning. So I was just the, gonna the, step in with a with another question. Unless there was any, did you have any more to to add to the the previous? Question, Federico. Uh, just one point about data availability. Uh, so basically, uh, refer to the um, uh, to the links that we have provided in the presentation. Uh, also, you can directly use what uh, what was presented by Sabrina. So the das dot training dot umetsa.int, I think. And here you also have uh, notebook uh, and guidance and indication on how to download uh, and how to uh, to retrieve all the different data that you have there. Uh, so these are the, the two tools that we provided today in that sense. Okay. Well, so yes, for complement about the links, all participants, you have the links from Sabrina in the chat if you're interested, just for your information. Okay, so I was going to, and while while Federico and Santiago are answering the last question, there was a, a question, a general question from Nicholas Constantino asking about being able to separate out the dust component from, um, I guess, satellite aerosol observations. Not not necessarily interest in height, but just trying to identify dust from the observations themselves, um, in particular for sources in the southern hemisphere over land. So I know this is in. Santiago's um, domain, but also uh, Federica, if you have got any questions, comments on this. Yes, uh, I mean, if it is on uh, climatological side, as uh, uh, it seems the case, uh, we are working on uh, now on PMAP. Uh, what I have presented is a, is a climate data record is quite new. Uh, so there is a present publication to characterize the data set. And we are working on uh, ourselves on the analysis on comparison with uh, uh, with existing products. So uh, all the products they have uh, advantages and drawbacks. So PMAP has better sensitivity above above the ocean uh, and lesser sensitivity. I mean lesser quality above the land as uh, usually happens. But the product is also provided above the land. So this is for sure one uh, one uh, one uh, one starting point. Then I, I mean I am aware of uh, of products that are derived from Modis, both in terms of uh, let's say optical depth, but also uh, but also dust occurrence. That is uh, that is a sort of uh, uh, of statistic uh, statistic. There there are several papers on it. My point is. Uh, I mean, probably to make use of different uh, of different satellite sources, uh, of the different observational sources, and uh, I mean, uh, and have uh, a comparison you know, among the among the results that are uh, that are obtained, uh, especially in regions where you possibly have less coverage from ground based uh, ground based observation. I mean, most of the scientific analysis that I have seen in terms of dust variability on the long term and mid term. I mean, they were also using a lot, for instance, Ironet or also visibility data sets at the ground to validate the approach. In that sense, I think the satellite intercomparison can be a good way also to, uh, to, to strengthen the results. It's a, it's a bit vague answer, but uh, 
I mean, it's. But I, so I guess this also addresses this uh, follow-up question nine nine eight nine three nine nine asking about <laughs> yeah which product shows better the local hotspots. But I think that the, the answer is probably the same one more or less um, as was given to to Nicholas. Uh, I mean, it depends. Uh, uh... I mean, for the local hotspots, certainly you need to, I mean, if, if with hotspot, we, we define the process of uh, aerosol, uh, aerosol uh, uplift, uh, for sure, you, you need two things, a good time coverage, and then it is, is for instance, given by geostationary, so then you can, uh, you can track uh, convective events or, uh, let's say, strong hub oops and so on. And in that case, for sure, uh, there is a very good uh, aspect in, in using uh, uh, in using the Meteosat or Meteosat Himawari GoS, and that's uh, that's absolutely useful from my point of view. Uh, and uh, for instance, is also you want to, for instance, uh, analyze the evolution of uh, the evolution of uh, aerosol or dust clouds. Uh, at a global scale, it can be also useful, for instance, to use the aerosol index if, if these are sufficiently uh, sufficiently thick or aerosol optical depth. But if you want to work at a local scale, possibly focus on the uh, most resoluted in time and uh, potentially space. Okay, thank you. And we still have one last question. So. Uh, about the vertical profile of aerosols and um, which data is, is considered. Um, this wasn't touched on in the presentation, but if you, if you have comment, then please. Yeah, uh, I have I have mentioned it. I mean, not really presented, but mentioned the uh, the product on dust height that comes from Yazi. It is a scientific product. I mean, it's not provided by Umetsat. It will be provided by Umetsat from potentially mid of mid of next year. In the frame of ACSAF, uh, for the moment there are uh, there is a product that is uh, that is uh, from uh, the Bira, the Belgium uh, Aerospace System. So from uh, from Sophie Van den Bush. I, I think uh, you, if you go on the site, you can directly contact her. And that is this one point uh, for sure. There is uh, the the same uh, old uh, good old uh, Calliope. That is uh, that is absolutely great, uh, and uh, and I mean, for instance, if you see the the, the Yazi people, they they still use a Calliope for for comparison, but for sure, in terms of continuity, we really expect much uh, in terms of the from the Yazi from the Yazi product, and also Yazi will have the Yazi next generation on the PSSG. So there is in perspective the possibility to have a long term continuity from two thousand seven to the future. I don't know, it's uh, you have a last question. It's not the end. You have okay. a last question because there is someone that tries the hand. Okay. Uh, it's Christian Sarabia. I will give you voice and then you can launch your 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 question to Federico okay. and Hi, Sabrina. Hi, Christian. Ciao. No, it's not. Then if you don't talk, you can write your question in the questions and answers. Now he's shy, but there are, the, you can see the hand, right? It's right. Yes. No, Christian, no, nothing to say. No, no, nothing to say. <laughs> and then if someone else has que questions, I, I, I will down the hand mm -hmm. and then uh... I, I would just say here from the perspective of the united states uh i'm really impressed of all the online uh tools you have all those trainings are really impressive and uh and i have to say that from what i know here in nasa they are trying to do something like that but they are way behind so <laughs> you can uh you can enjoy enjoy what what for now <laughs> Yeah, thanks. I mean, we, I mean, we work a lot with the NOAA as well, but uh, yeah, but any type of partnership would be good. So, I mean, for yeah. instance, we are, we are learning a lot on the wildfire aspect. Uh, yeah, the fires platform, uh, and we are learning on that side. And uh, I mean, absolutely, that's... Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, I think uh, everything to make it more accessible. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, I sent you a, a link. Uh, yes, on you, and that, you yeah. And that's, I mean, 
what I, I wonder if you can share that or not, but that's a UMSAT website that I found very useful because it's just to get images and it's yes. not necessarily for, uh, isn't it? So can you share mm -hmm. that to the group or? Um, uh, anyway, send because... me the link. If you can send me the link, because I don't know if you can share with everyone, I will share with everyone. But in any case, Mark has also the hand raised. Yes. I hope that this will be not a mistake now. <laughs> No, no, it's yeah, but actually Santiago sort of leads it up. So I was just there was a question earlier about the UMETSAT trainings. And of course I've worked with Federico and Sabrina a lot over the last few years on, on training as well. And it's just I guess for this this webinar, this is a good opportunity just to, to highlight um the additional trainings beyond just um what UMETSAT does, but also like so the the side events that, that we run in various conferences and also the opportunities for providing tailored training or information for specific communities in different parts of the world and, and what those opportunities are. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, no. I mean, basically one, one good point is really to go on our, uh, let's say on our site, on the ACNWF site, on the Copernicus site and everything is advertised there. Uh, most of the events and the activities are really joint. Uh, we really work together because one, of, one point is that uh, the users, and here I show what Santiago just mentioned, and, uh, they have a very, let's say, complex needs in, from our point of view. So basically, uh, there is the need to work with the different type of satellite data to merge them with ground-based, and also, for instance, to use CAMS or to use the, uh, the Monarch simulation. So the point is really to provide, uh, an, uh, let's say, a combined approach in terms of that access but also in terms of uh, in terms of training and that uptake so i think it's very important what mark said yeah and this is the the UMET view platform that santiago just mentioned so you can you can play i mean he's a viewer and here you have almost all the uh, all the all the sensors but uh, i mean again one of the complaints that we have is that this stops to the last uh, 20 20 days and uh, and it doesn't uh, is not a visualizer of the archive. So basically, for the archive, you you need to go on the website or use the API. This is the reason why we are building the data store in order to have one single access point. But uh, I mean, for instance, in that sense, we are behind NASA. You know? Yeah, at least. Yeah, it's it's not easy to do that. Yeah, yeah. No. No. So uh, regarding what you do, uh, do you offer uh, for people, let's say in South America or in the Southern Hemisphere, do you do dedicated trainings yes. for certain regions and do you yes. do it in different languages too? Yes, we are setting this up and uh, yeah, there is, a, there is now a first event uh, since three years uh, that is managed by IMET, I think it will be with Guatemala. And uh, but this is absolutely open. So there is absolutely. I mean, let's let's discuss because we are really open. But I think also Mark, uh, I can for sure also represent Mark, represent the CNWF. There is absolutely interest also to liaise with the specific community. Just to mention for completeness, so we have uh, a long term collaboration with Southeast Asia in the frame of WCRP and the ACAM program. So we already work with them and uh, for sure working with South American community, also working in Spanish would be absolutely good okay. and, uh, and no, no, interesting. Good, good information. Yeah. Let's iterate uh, yeah. offline. It's 403 and Perfect. I, I saw some, some hands rise in the chat, but so sorry, can you send me the question and I will share with Federico, because before we end the webinar, I have to announce, or oops, I have to announce, sorry, because I have many boxes open, the next uh, webinar, that it will be 14th December, same hour, same day of the week, is Wednesday, at three o'clock, Central European time, and we will have Andrea Sili and Ashford Reyes, that are coming from the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology, and they will overview all the activities for forecasting and applications related with the dust impact in the Caribbean. That is really something that it's it's far away from Sahara, but is, is affecting Americas. Then they, they will overview several problems that uh, are trying to face the problems that Sahara and dust has also in this side of the world. 
And it's a pleasure because it's, we are connecting with other regions of the SDS Woods program, that is America. And also the Caribbean Institute is hosting the regional center for the Pan-American node of the SDS Woods. Then uh, it will be your pleasure uh, to have this uh, talk before Christmas. Then will be the last webinar of the year. And also because it's uh, something that you asked me recurrent, just remember that we are announcement, uh, doing the announcements of the webinars through Twitter or Twitter account, that is this Das Barcelona. Also, if you are subscribing or newsletter, you can also receive a mailing, a mailing list uh, with the announcement. But also, because it's not the, the first time that the people is asking me, in the website, there is this section called resources, where if you visit uh, this section, there is a nice uh, um, bottom where you can find all the webinars, the past webinars that we were, um, that we are uh, coordinating through the regional center. Uh, also, in a few days, you will have the slides and the recording of the web of the webinar of today from Federico and Sabrina. Then, when you go now, there is nothing because I couldn't have time to upload everything, but. Before next week, probably everything will be here. And also, if you want to know about upcoming events, you can go here in this section of news and events. And in the event section, it is already announced the next webinar, but also the, the upcoming conferences and, and workshops related with DAST and aerosols. And then you can keep aware of all these interesting events that are basically for the next year. And with it, I don't know if any of you panelists wants to, to add anything else. Just I want to thank a lot, Sabrina and Federico, for your time and to share with us this afternoon. And thanks a lot for this overview. I think that it was really like useful for most of us that we work with satellite data. And um, with it, uh, also thanks a lot to all the chairs of this session, Santiago, Slodovan, Mark, Thanks a lot for sharing with me this afternoon. And I hope to see you in December. Just book in your calendars, 14 December, and go to the registration link for, for, for adding you for the session, okay? Then see you. Have a nice afternoon. <laughs>